Imagine watching a movie trailer with a deep voice saying, In a place where everyone's minding their own business, what's really going on? There's a princess in the center, people all around her, and an artist who looks like he knows a secret. It's kind of like those Where's Waldo puzzles, but instead of stripes, there's a lot of fancy clothes. Las Meninas, whipped up by Diego Velazquez in 1656, isn't your average wall art. Think of it as a mega brain teaser. You'll find this tricky masterpiece, chilling, in Madrid's Prado Museum. It's got Princess Margarita Teresa and her squad hanging out, but there's a twist. It's packed with sneaky surprises. Total mind boggler. At first, you think it's just a fancy group picture, but hold on. Velazquez is playing tricks with what you see and what's reflected. There's a mirror in the back which shows King Philip IV and Queen Mariana. But the big question is, are they actually in the room or just in the mirror? Now, about Velazquez showing himself in the painting, that's a real drop-the-mic moment. He's not just some extra in the background. He's making a big statement. Back then, painters weren't considered big-shot artists. But here's Velazquez putting himself right in the painting, looking out at us. He's saying, hey, I'm important too. It's like he's breaking the rules, but with his paintbrush. Meet Diego Velazquez, the main guy we're talking about. Picture him as the 17th century version of an Instagram filter, making everything look good for King Philip IV. But it wasn't all smooth sailing for him. Even though he was the king's favorite painter, he really had to work hard to make people see his art as something serious, not just a hobby. That struggle is a big part of Las Meninas. In this painting, Velazquez isn't just showing us a scene. He's making a big statement about how important he thinks art is. Velazquez's life was pretty interesting. He was close to the royal folks, but wasn't exactly one of the main guys. He was in the same room as all the important stuff happening, but not at the big table. This kind of in-between position is something you can see in Las Meninas. He puts himself in the painting, but not front and center. It's his way of saying, Hey, I might not be a famous writer like Cervantes, but my art has a lot to say. In Las Meninas, Velazquez captures a brief moment, like a snapshot. The painting goes beyond mere visuals. It delves into the essence of art, perception, and the artist's societal impact. Velasquez skillfully manipulates light and shadow to engage us in a centuries-old dialogue. More than a mere spectacle, this artwork stimulates thought and emotion. It's replete with unexpected elements, maintaining engagement and acting as a portal to an era, not just a frozen instant. It's like a picture in its execution. Some figures are sharply defined, while others blur into the background, sparking debate about Velazquez's possible use of a camera-like technique for initial capture before immortalizing the scene on canvas. Think of this painting as a concert of visuals where every part is cleverly put together to catch your eye. Where should you look first in Las Meninas is a big question. Leo Steinberg said that Velazquez played with the lines in the painting, making our eyes move around. The way the people are placed and how they look at each other is like a well-rehearsed dance, moving our gaze all over the painting. The painting feels deep and three-dimensional because of the way things are lined up, how they overlap, and especially how shadows and light are used. The light in Velazquez's work is super important. It makes things look more real and puts the spotlight on the main parts of the painting. Take the Infanta Margarita, for instance. She's all lit up and becomes the star of the show. Her face and figure grab your attention in the middle of everything else going on. Meanwhile, other characters are kind of hidden or in the shadows, making it a cool mix of clear and hidden details that add to the painting's story. The painting is set in Velazquez's studio in the palace, filled with artworks he chose. There are a bunch of things that are happening in the picture, but let's focus on the main stuff. First, you might see Margaret Teresa, the king's daughter, or maybe the mirror with the king and queen in it catches your eye. Or the fact that many people in the painting seem to be looking right at you. The way Velazquez arranged everyone in the painting is super clever. 
He's got people in pairs and threes making your eyes move all over the place. Almost everyone can be paired up with the exception of the princess, the male and the female dwarf, some chaperones, the maid and the palace official, Velasquez and the other maid, and even the king and the queen in the mirror. In the same way, the group could be grouped into three, the princess and her two maids, Velasquez with the king and queen, the three palace officials, and the two dwarves and the dog. The commonality in all these pairs and threes is that the princess is the center of attention. Now, the mirror. Some think it shows the king and queen standing where we, the viewers, would be, making us feel like royalty. But if you look closely, you'll see that the real focus isn't on the mirror, but on a door in the background. That means the mirror isn't reflecting us, but something else. Probably the canvas Velasquez is painting on. This painting is like a storybook of secrets, especially if you take a closer look at the paintings hanging in the background. These aren't just random pictures thrown in for decoration. They're carefully picked to add more layers to the story. The right side, which is kind of hidden in the shadows, is like a mini gallery. It's got scenes from Metamorphosos by Rubens, and also some copies of Jacob Jourdain's work done by Velasquez's son-in-law, Juan Bautista del Mazo. This mix of paintings brings together myths and religious themes, playing with the idea of heaven and earth. Now the cool part is the two specific paintings by Peter Paul Rubens on that wall, Minerva punishing Arachne and Apollo's victory over Marseilles. These aren't just random choices. Both show what happens when regular folks try to outdo gods and things don't end well. One shows Arachne, a really good weaver who got turned into a spider by the goddess Athena for daring to weave better than her. The other is about Marsyas, who challenged the god Apollo in a music contest and ended up getting punished big time for it. Both stories are about regular folks trying to beat the gods and paying the price for it. This is kind of like a sneaky comment on the power plays happening in the main part of Las Maninas. Las Maninas is a big deal because it's not just a painting, it's about a painting itself. Velasquez is telling everyone, including the king and queen, that art can create amazing images, maybe even better than what you see in a mirror. Velasquez added these paintings to show how cool and powerful the painting can be. This way of doing things really puts the spotlight on painting as a skill, that it's just as noble as the prominent jobs at the time. This trick of putting art within art is one of the reasons Velasquez is considered a master. He's not just painting a scene, he's telling stories within stories. Think of it like a movie where the background is as important as the main action. Each painting in the background is carefully chosen to add to the story of Las Meninas, making you think about the bigger picture, literally and figuratively. It's like Velasquez is inviting you to be detectives, piecing together clues from every corner of the canvas. The play of light and shadow, the choice of background paintings, and the positioning of each character. All of these are like puzzle pieces in Velasquez's grand scheme. It's not just art, it's a visual riddle, challenging us to look beyond what's immediately visible and dive deeper into the world he's created. So you can say that this just isn't a painting. It's a conversation across centuries, every element, each glance, every shadow tells a part of a larger story about art, perspective, power, and the human experience. And you can help us dig deeper into it with your like and subscribe. Because this just isn't an in-depth analysis. It's the passion that unites us in the new dimension Velasquez wants to transport us to every time we gaze at Las Meninas.